Hello everyone, myself Dr. Jyoti Mandala. Welcome you all to the video lecture series on operating systems course. So we are learning about process management which is one type of service provided by the operating system. We learn multiple services that are like we have learned like operating system we, uh, will provide multiple services like process management, memory management, disk management, all those things. So one among them is process management. As part of this process management, we learn up to now what is nothing but a process, what is, what is the, nothing but uh, what are all the process states we have, what is process control block. Okay. Today we will see about different types of queues that are maintained by the scheduling algorithms which we are going to learn in future. Okay, now what is the use of this shed, um, mm. scheduling queues? So we already learned uh, uh, at the time of learning about different types of operating system which is also called as evaluation of operating system. We have time shared operating system or multi-programming operating system. The main use of these two is to execute, uh, to effectively utilize the CPU time, isn't it or not? So in multi-programming system we may run more than one program where uh, we will be maximizing the CPU utilization uh, by, multi by running more than one program. Whereas in time shared you can remember uh, the CPU which is between the processes where there also we are effectively utilizing the CPU we are not keeping the CPU ID. Our main goal is not to keep the CPU ID we need to effectively utilize our um, uh, utilize our CPU time. Okay. Now to achieve this multi-programming concept we need to mul uh, maintain multiple queues. Okay. So these queues will help us in assigning the programs uh, uh, in maintaining the list of programs in the database. Okay. So what sort of queues are there, where those queues will be available, all these things we are going to learn today. Okay. Before that make a note all of you what is the use of these all these scheduling queues. So scheduling queues are used to achieve so to achieve, one second, okay. to achieve multi-programming, multiple queues are maintained So what type of queues are maintained we will see, okay. So we have mainly three types of queues we have. We will see what are all those three types of queues, okay. So the first type is uh, job queue. Second type of queue is ready queue. And the third type of queue is device queue. So we have three types of queues maintained. All these queues are maintained to achieve multi-programming. Okay, if we want to execute multiple programs so that we may not be wasting our CPU time. We want to we want to effectively utilize the CPU time. Okay, so to do that task, my job queue, ready queue and device queues are there. Now what are all these queues, we will see. Okay, first one is job queue. Now what is this job queue? Job queue is nothing but uh, this queue will be maintaining all the processes that are there in the uh, computer. Like in your computer system what are all the processes are there that will be maintained so contents of this job queue like the list of processes all those things will be maintained in the job queue you know those contents will be available in the hard disk okay make a note all of you will make a note here first one is job queue now what is the use of this job queue job queue is used to this will maintain list of all the processes available in our system. In our computer system what are all the list of processes we have now that will be maintained that will be maintained by this job queue. Now in this what where the data will be available the contents of this job queue will be available in hard disk that means in your secondary memory okay now, 
coming to the next type of cube which is your ready cube that is your second type what is that ready cube now what is this ready cube uh, in the last class while learning about um, uh, uh, what is that one we learned about uh, process states while learning that concept no we learned about a little bit about this ready queue ready queue is nothing but it is one type of data structure where um, where the um, what are all the process which are main waiting for the cpu no, that will be stored here the same thing here this contains a list of all the process that are waiting in the waiting for the cpu so once they uh, once they get the chance to execute they will be executed so until then they will be waiting in this queue so this maintain list of all the processes waiting for cpu they are waiting for the cpu time okay so all the these all these things are residing in the main memory that is what we learn no so this data this the contents of this ready queue are maintained or available in the main memory understand the difference between the job queue and the ready queue job queue contains all the list of process okay but ready queue contains the list of processes which are waiting for the cpu so the contents of this one will be available in the hard disk the ready the contents of the ready queue will be available in the main memory we have one more type of device what is that device uh, one more type of queue that is a device queue device queue now what is the use of this queue this queue is used to Uh, uh, maintain the list of process that are waiting for an IO device. Like in, while learning the process states, no, we understood uh, waiting state one there. One waiting state is there. So there, uh, when a process will be moved to the waiting state, suppose a process want to execute an IO event to be performed. In that case, the process will be moved from running state to the ready state, uh, running state to the um, uh, waiting state. Then we uh, there. we are again maintaining one queue there may be more than one process waiting for io operations to be performed so those process all will be maintained in a queue called device queue okay so no doubt that point all of you this contains list of maintains list of all the processes waiting for ivo devices or ivo operations okay all right now where this uh, this information will be maintained this information will be maintained by each device so each device has its own queue suppose one, one device is printer printer is having its own uh, this one uh, other one is another input device that is having its own list okay so here you need to understand each device has its own device queue it is not common for all the queue all the devices each device is having its own queue okay uh, so job queue will be maintained in the hard disk which contains all the uh, processes we have in our computer ready queue maintains or is maintained in the main memory which contains all the process waiting for the cpu and device queue is maintained by individual device which contains all the process waiting for their uh, work to be done by the io device okay so these are all the different types of queues we have now by considering these queues we have a queuing diagram for performing the process scheduling uh, let us see what is that diagram okay keep you heading all of you queuing diagram where in this queuing diagram uh, we are going to use all these queues okay so there should be some uniformity which process has to be executed when and how the flow of execution in that process no how where the job queue where the ready queue where the device queue will be used let us see okay 
note down all of you so we have a diagrammatic representation for this one let us see that diagram now so this is a diagrammatic representation we will understand how this diagram how this flow of execution will be working okay you can see here the triangle the triangle shape whatever is here no the whatever the triangle shape is represented here the triangle shape represents the q ready q i o q we have a device q the triangle shape represents the q the ellipse shape represents the events whatever we want to perform or the actions we want to perform and the circle represents the resource cpu is one type of resource input output device is one type of resource so circle represents the resources triangle represents the queues and ellipse represents the uh, events okay now let us see now we have our uh, secondary memory here let us consider so in the secondary memory uh, job queue will be there okay so this is job queue let us consider now job queue will be from job queue you will be moving the things to the ready queue ready queue is nothing but this is nothing but your main memory okay so this is one queue now whenever a new process is initiated whenever a new process is created then that new process will be moved to if you want to execute that one whenever a new process is created and it is saved in the secondary memory then it will be stored in the job queue okay now suppose if you want to execute that process that process has to be copied into the main memory and it has to be kept into the ready queue until it will be selected by the dispatcher to get executed by the cpu so uh, it is waiting the process is waiting in this queue to get its chance so this will be available in the main memory now once it has got the chance let us consider it is here now now once it is got selected by the cpu let us consider we have p1 p2 p3 p4 multiple queues are there multiple processes are there in this queue now p1 got a chance now p1 is here p1 is executed by the cpu now whenever p1 is executing by the cpu there may be several chances to execute several chances to several events to um, occur first one is it may request an io if in case if it is requesting an io event to be executed that means it has to be sent to the waiting state so there you need to have a device queue so a particular type of uh, device let us consider it want to perform a it wants to perform uh, um, a printer it wants a printer operation to be performed in that case a printer is maintaining its own queue okay so that uh, to that queue it will be added suppose so once that operation is performed it will be uh, again sent back to the ready queue suppose there may be a chance like you have been using the round robin scheduling algorithm in that round robin scheduling algorithm the time slice is over for this process in that case it is not going to add to any other queue it is directly going to add again the ready queue here you need to understand it is going to add to one queue here we have a job queue okay i'll represent with another color suppose here we have a job queue j queue and here we have a ready queue which is already represented here and in this case we will be having a device queue okay but in this case of a round robin let us consider round robin scheduling algorithm you are using in case of round robin scheduling algorithm time slice will be there if the time slice is expired the process will be forcibly moved into the ready queue so that another process gets a chance to execute it so that is one way one one thing or else another event may occur like p1 has created one child by using a fork fork is nothing but creating a child so until and unless the child finishes its execution we cannot declare that program p1 has completed its execution so till that it has to once the child has finished its execution then it has to move back to the ready queue and then it has to wait here until it's get a chance so that may be one chance or else i told you no interrupt in the last class only we learned about this one priority scheduling algorithm you there so depending upon the priority sometimes it has to be moved back to the ready queue so that the highest priority algorithm highest priority queue uh, uh, process that is available in the queue can be executed by the cpu got it so there may be several events like this there may be several events like this which may cause which may cause a process to be moved into the device queue or it can be moved into the ready queue but understand here from the job queue to the ready queue it will be moved only once 
from the job queue to the ready queue it will be moved only once but from ready queue to device queue okay from ready queue to again to the ready queue it can be moved uh, multiple times depending upon the event it is occurring depending upon the cpu time it wants everything okay so this is how the dequeuing diagram will be there and how different queues are uh, you working here okay so once the process execution is done it will be terminated so this is termination that means the process is, has finished its execution and all the resources that is maintained by this P, uh, process that is its pcd process control block we learned in the last class now that pre process control block will be deallocated it is available in the main memory that will be deallocated okay and all the resources all the resources means it may be, it might have re requested for some resources all the resources will also be 